Hi, everybody. My name is Joseph Goodman of Goodman Games. I'm here today to welcome new players to the DCC family. So for everybody who has picked up the DCC rulebook recently or played in a Zoom demo or otherwise found DCC RPG, welcome. Welcome to the band, as we like to say. The purpose of this video is to give you a little bit of background information and some resources on the game. And there'll be additional information posted and additional videos from some of the other key players in the DCC space, which we'll uh, show you in the coming weeks. For today, though, I wanted to give you a little bit of background on the game, um, some insights as to how it got created and what we tried to accomplish. DCC RPG is grounded in Appendix N, which is the list of inspirational books that Gary Gygax read when he wrote Dungeons and Dragons. And he provided this list in an early publication a long time ago. In order to write DCC RPG, I read every single book in that list, which took several years. And my goal was to recreate the original foundational inspirations of D&D &D in a way that you can play these experiences in the game. So you can do everything that Elric did and everything that Fafford and the Grey Mouser did and everything that Conan did and everything that H.P. Lovecraft wrote about. You can do all of that in DCC RPG. But the mechanics used are many decades further along and evolved relative to what Gary Gygax had to work with. One of my original goals was to run some sort of RPG game for a lot of my young cousins. Um, at the time, I was running games at family reunions, and I found that the, you know, the time available I had to prep and the time it took to generate a character and the time it took to actually run the game was not conducive to the audience of my young cousins. And so um, there were many things that led to this creation, but one of the inspirational factors was finding time in my busy life to run these fun games, and a lot of that led to DCC RPG. It plays remarkably quickly. Character creation is uh, fast and also extremely fun with the funnel. And you'll find that many of the mechanics can be um, figured out pretty quickly on the spot. One of the core inspirations that we followed was always rulings, not rules. You as the judge have the um, ultimate decision power as to what happens in your game, what's right for your game, your adventure, your players, your table. And we call that rulings don't rules, uh, not rules. There, there you know, isn't necessarily a rule for everything in the game. And we have deliberately not clarified everything because we encourage you to make a ruling when that need arises. There's a lot of unique mechanics like the deed die and spell checks, spell burn, deity disapproval. Um, all sorts of things that will hopefully allow you to express some of those great adventures from Appendix in at your table incredibly quickly using an amazing variety of funky dice. I love dice, and there's a reason you need to have a D5 and a D7. You don't actually have to have them. You can get the same results with a D6. You drop the 6, etc. But it's so much fun having those cool dice at the table. So one of the best things about DCC is the community. Um, it's really kind of remarkable how this community has evolved. We all share many things. Obviously, we enjoy the game. I think DCC RPG tends to attract people who like to read um, because, you know, reading Appendix in is, is part, of the, part of the experience. I think it tends to attract people who like to, you know, talk about pop culture and movies and music, especially from the 70s and 80s. I kind of wish I was an adult uh, back then. I think I would have enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, we like wizard vans and blacklight posters. We like kung fu movies and Godzilla. We like a lot of stuff, as well as early TSR projects or products um, and a lot of those early TSR, you know, inspirational designers, artists, and other factors. Um, one thing that's important to note is all the art in DCC RPG is created by hand. That might sound unusual, but it actually is unusual in the current space where much of the art in role-playing games right now is created digitally. So when you look at DCC RPG and wonder about that distinctive look, that's because somebody actually drew it or painted it on you know, paper, canvas, or a board, as opposed to creating it on a digital screen. And in my, in my opinion, the uh, the game plays like the art. So if you pick up that, that core rulebook and look through the, the pages and all the fantastic art in there, that to me is very evocative of how the game should play. It's also worth noting that we have a free license available to creators who want to create their own DCC third-party product. Um, we make it a very profitable experience because we will buy your product um, at great terms and sell it in our online store. And we want to encourage people to create as much amazing material as possible because the game is about rulings, not rules, and that includes your creations and your rulings for them. The last thing to note is that there's only one edition of DCC RPG. There are a lot of different covers and a lot of different printings because people, people keep buying it, so thank you. And I like to do alternate covers because frankly, I love the art. Um, but the rules are all the same and they'll always be the same. I actually, I don't think we'll ever need another edition. Um, it's not about that. Anyway, thanks for joining our community. We're glad to have you. We welcome you here. We hope to roll some dice with you, whether it's uh, you know online or whatever online cons or in person at a physical con. Maybe we'll see you in the comments of our Twitch streams. However it might be, we hope to hear from you soon and play with you some more and welcome to the band. Thanks. I'll talk to you later.